Hi guys, welcome to Heartlight Tarot and Astrology. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new to my channel, I am a tarot card reader and I work with energies of the tarot along with what's going on astrologically to give you guys a predictive forecast. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, consider subscribing to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you get notified when I post content. I post monthly horoscope and tarot readings that are combined along with love horoscope and tarot readings and two special videos about what's going on astrologically every month that involve tarot as well. Um, if you, if that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribing to my channel, hit the notification bell. This is going to be a horoscope and tarot reading for the sign of Leo for April, 2024. Just a heads up. This is not a personal one-to-one -one reading. This is just a collective reading for the sign of Leo, sun, moon, and rising. So you're definitely going to want to check out your moon sign and your rising sign as well. Um, if you are here for your sun sign, that's okay. It's going to be geared more towards your, um, it's going to be geared more towards your career and your fatherly figures. Um, if it is your rising sign, this is basically all about you. And if it's your moon sign, it's subjective and uh, it's more personal. So um, there's a lot of fire energy this month. And as, and as far as you're concerned, you are a fire sign. So it, in my opinion, they go well together. Um, this is a month about Aries. It's, the sun is in Aries. Um, we also have our Mercury retrograde that's happening on the 1st of April and it ends on the 25th of April. We are in our shadow period. Um, so if you haven't noticed, things are starting to maybe pop up for you in a way where you need to back up your computers or back up your, you know, or go through emails and unsubscribe to things because you're getting way, way too many emails. Maybe you have to get your oil change, something's going on with your car. I suggest you handle those things um, uh, before this Mercury retrograde uh, really sets into effect. If you're traveling, don't forget to show up early, leave early, make sure everything's running correctly, make sure you have all your documents and some Mercury rolls documents. Um, it's going to be in your ninth house because it is going to be retrograde in the sign of Aries. So if you are a legal rising, this is your ninth house of higher calling, your philosophy. Um, foreign lands, foreign, foreign countries, education, book publishing. Um, so the fact that Mercury is going to be retrograde in that, that ninth house just shows that you're maybe going over some old terms in regards to a publishing contract or um, maybe you're really planning a, a vacation or a tra traveling um, this Mercury retrograde. Um, on the 8th, we have our solar eclipse in um, Aries in your ninth in your ninth house at 19 degrees. Um, so that's that's new beginnings there. Um, we had our lunar eclipse. We, had, we just had our lunar eclipse here last month. Um, and that was creating more balance in your life in whatever area Libra is in your chart. So for you guys, um, it was your third house of short distance travel, communication, siblings, neighbors. So maybe you're finding yourself balanced, balancing out between, you know, short distance travel, um, you know, maybe letting go of some relationship to family, neighbors, maybe creating some kind of balance in between your communication. Um, you're also letting go of some kind of thought processes and it's going to lead its way into a new beginning in that ninth house of travel. So maybe you're going to be finding yourself traveling or learning something new or publishing a book since that third house um, represents writing as well. So for April 10th, we have Mars in Pisces is conjunct Saturn in Pisces. Um, Pisces rules your eighth house. Okay. Um, Mars has been in there. Saturn's been in there. Uh, Saturn's been in your house of other people's money. Your, your, the house of fears and sex and power and um, your relationship to power and your relationship to other people's money, rental contracts. Mars is in there as well. So you might be finding yourself ending some kind of contract in regards to where you live. Um, or you might just be working really hard in that aspect because when Mars and Saturn come together, Mars requires action and Saturn re requires doing things the right way and not cutting corners. So you might be finding yourself kind of stressed out in that area um, around the 10th or something might just really be intense on that day. Um, on the 11th, you have... Sun conjunct Mercury and Aries. 
So I was saying that Aries rules your ninth house, Leo. Um, the sun conjuncting Mercury in your in your um, your ninth house. Mercury is retrograde, right? So with the sun being there, it's communicating with Mercury and Aries. So you might be finding yourself looking at old thought processes about your higher philosophy, religion, and educational goals, maybe your relationship with the teacher. You might be finding yourself changing your mind in regards to something that you've always believed or been believing up until this point. Um, you could be coming into communication with old um, teachers, old religious figures, somebody that you really look up to, and maybe there might be a new start there as well. Um, on the 19th of April, we have Mercury retrograde and it's conjuncting Venus and Aries. So this month, Venus is moving into Aries and Aries is not comfortable in the sign of Venus um, or in, in the planet. The planet Venus is not comfortable in the sign of Aries. Excuse me. So um, because Venus rules relationships in Aries is a very fiery energy. Self-starter, um, likes to try new things ruled by mars um the planet of action um you might be finding yourself maybe in some kind of arguments um with someone of a female authority possibly or a female teacher um or just finding strife in your belief systems in regards to maybe relationships in those areas too however that resonates with you on the 20th of april you have jupiter conjunct uranus and taurus um, we all know that Jupiter is the expansive planet, right? It's a benefit planet and it um, expands things, right? Anything that it comes across, it expands it. Um, Uranus is also an expansive planet, but it also shakes things up. I feel like this is going to be very positive for you. Um, since Taurus rules your 10th house of authority figures, your relationship with authority, your career, however the world sees you if you are not working. Um, so when Jupiter and Uranus, they come conjunct together in that 10th house, I feel like some kind of expansion and some kind of blow up is going to be happening in a positive way where all of a sudden you get that promotion or all of a sudden you're a boss or all of a sudden the world sees you as an authority figure or some kind of leader. Um, and it can, you know, help you in your finances too. Um, on the 23rd of April, you have the full moon in Scorpio. Um, well, I'm going to skip past that one. We all know what full moons are about, right? And uh, we have the 25th of April. We have Mercury direct. Um, so we're going to be finally out of that retrograde. Obviously, we're going to be having that um, shadow period afterwards, though. So keep in mind that we're not fully out of retrograde until uh, halfway through May. Okay, because remember, it's about two weeks give or take before and after so right now i'm shooting this video um we are in the shadow of it um then we have so on the 25th mercury is direct it's conjunct the north node in in uh, aries right so that solar eclipse i mentioned on april 8th it's um the north node rules this eclipse and the north node in aries both are about moving forward um taking initiative you know um divine timing the universe is kind of pushing you forward to do something and to take on new endeavors um so mercury is going to be direct and it's going to be conjuncting the north node um at 15 degrees so you're going to be feeling some kind of push um and towards whatever calling whatever you've been um just working on recently is actually going to be starting to make sense around that time all right so now that your astrology is um out there let's go ahead and get your tarot i already shuffled a little bit before this video so i'm gonna shuffle a little bit more for leo what do you have for leo in your current energy of the knight of wands so you might be wanting to travel like i was saying you guys have this retrograde happening in your house of travel okay well not necessarily well, long distance travel international travel um and it's fire energy you are a fire sign aries is a fire sign so i feel like this retrograde and this solar eclipse energy 
um, and this North Node energy is really causing um, um, having you want to travel, okay? Or maybe just really take the time to get to know foreign countries, foreign lands, plan some kind of travel, um, really get connected with higher calling, um, really be excited about it, right? Because the Knight of Wands is a very fun energy. He's very excited about life. Um, he has doesn't necessarily have like the the biggest plan. So he doesn't have like the end goal in mind, but he just knows that he is learning something um, as he goes. And he's very excited and happy to be part of something new. Okay, so that's the that's the energy of the Knight of Wands. I'm going to clarify it for you. In your recent past, you have the Eight of Pentacles. You were working really hard. Um, working really hard on something. Nine of Swords. Okay, so maybe this this um, this energy that you're feeling that you want to travel or you want to learn something new might be feeling a little overwhelming. It might be um, having you question um, things that you've always believed and kind of thinking about the past. So I was talking to you about that that energy. I think it was on the the tenth or the eleventh. Um, where sun, the sun is conjunct Mercury and Aries, right? Where it's kind of like looking at the past, the things that you've believed and um, kind of moving forward like this Knight of Wands does in a different direction. Um, so I feel like it might be causing some kind of anxiety because as a Leo, I'm a Leo sun. So I'm a very fixed energy in this solar eclipse. Aries energy is a great energy in combination because it's trining you know it's trining these fire signs are trining each other in the chart but it doesn't mean that it's not going to be difficult for leo placements aries is a cardinal sign so it's easier for them to change right and leo is fixed so you know some of the things that you might be going through in your minds or you know your overall calling in life or the way that you believe in things might be changing and it might be causing some kind of anxiety because you've always believed um, things to be a certain way, right? We have the Knight of Wands with the Nine of Swords here. So it might be on your mind a lot. Like, which way do I want to go? What do I really believe? Um, in your recent past, like I was saying, you have the Eight of Pentacles, working really hard on one thing and one thing only. Um, the Ace of Cups here. Uh, maybe you broke free from only working on one thing and one thing only and decided to follow your heart. Okay. Um, maybe you worked really hard on something and maybe it might be a book like I was talking to you about. Um, maybe it was your soul's calling, right? With the Ace of Cups being here. I really do feel like that's like a divine card. Okay. It's a divine card in itself. Um, it's like, follow your heart. Your heart is overflowing with all this happiness and this abundance. It's also something new that came into your life too. So maybe bam, all of a sudden you look up and you met the love of your life. This is general, but it could be for some of you, or you're working really hard on something that you love. And now it's opening up wonders for you. It's opening up opportunities to travel possibly, or get some kind of book deal or be published. Okay. In the world, but it's causing some kind of anxiety because it's kind of triggering you to think about the things that you used to believe in the past, because you can see that you're enhancing your belief systems now. So it's kind of scaring you a little bit. Maybe you're feeling like maybe you missed something. Um, I feel like you're in the right direction now. The Queen of Pentacles being here in your upcoming future along with the Queen of Swords. You have two Queen energies, okay? Um, the Queen of Pentacles is Taurus, Capricorn, or Virgo, okay? So I see it more as, as a Taurus sign, um, but it could be any of those, and it's also accompanied with queen of swords which is air libra gemini and aquarius okay so that could be of significance i really just feel like you want to be like both of these combined okay whether you are male or female we all have masculine and feminine energies in our chart but it the fact the fact of this these two cards are is is it's some kind of leadership right it's it's like owning up to your responsibilities it's owning up to your your wisdom, okay? And people kind of come to you to make things out of something. For instance, like they bring you food from the grocery store and they ask, can you, you know, feed, you know, all of us for this party we have coming up? Or 
they trust you with things. In other words, the queen of swords is, okay, so what do you think we should do about this? And then they actually actively listen and they take your advice. So it's like this combination right here is very strong. And this is what's coming up for you because you're taking responsibility for your life and you're making good decisions with what you have, queen of pentacles, right? And the queen of swords has this way of just being the leader and making decisions quick decisions quickly based on her wisdom um i feel like the queen of pentacles is more of a maternal energy um and the queen of swords is more of of like a um like queen of pentacles is like a caretaker right or somebody that really cares for something and makes something out of something and the queen of swords is the one to kind of communicate through that and to make the decisions and to lead more a little bit more so that's very positive energy energy for you, Leo. Let me know in the comment box how this resonates. Let me get you guys an animal spirit card. You guys got octopus. Are you doing a lot of things? Are you using your arms a lot? <laughs> Are you feeling yourself really busy between a lot of stuff? Let me see if I can find it. Reaching, yearning, lacking boundaries and direction. The octopus signifies a wonderfully perceptive mind, paired with a lack of healthy boundaries. Unfortunately, this results in a well-intended but messy relationships. The octopus entwines itself into other people's business and shares their own without restraint. They believe that what it means to be close. That's what it means to be close. If you notice after spending time with someone that you feel drained or uneasy, the essence of octopus is at play. Begin to establish healthy boundaries. Be patient and firm. It may be very a very old habit to change. Maybe that's what you're doing right now. Maybe your philosophy is, philosophy is changing. Maybe you're going out there being more social, um, you know, just kind of expanding your knowledge in the world, right? And you find yourself, whoever you come in contact with, you share too much. Or you allow them to be part of your life in a way too of a personal way. Or maybe you entertain yourself in other people's business because you feel like, you know, in order to be a good friend, or you've always felt like in order to be a good friend, you need to carry their baggage too. Um, but what the octopus is saying is that you have this healthy, smart mind. Um, just don't dabble in other people's drama because it can bring you down. It can drain you. It can steal the energy that you need for yourself. So maybe that's what that nine of swords is saying to you. Maybe it's telling you that you know, you're noticing this about yourself and that's something that you would like to change. Um, when in balance, interested, engaged, and intelligent. When out of balance, needy, clingy, and lacks courage. To bring into balance, space to oneself, and talk therapy. So maybe you just need to talk things out with a good friend or with a therapist. Um, maybe that's something that you're going to be needing as well because that can be some of the energy for that ninth house of, you know, um, some kind of teacher, right? It could be some kind of counselor as well. And maybe you just need a little bit of space and you've been pulling too many people in because you feel like you want to be a good friend um, or maybe share some of the knowledge and you're just pulling too, ma too many people in and you have too much going on. So the tarot is telling you to take a break um, from people a little bit and kind of pull back and have your boundaries. And it's okay to push forward into what you believe what works for you and um, i hope that helps don't miss your guys' solar eclipse in aries readings next month and i'll see you guys soon bye